This is our C1 uh, particles checkpoint, slides 10 to 12. A gap fill here, we're thinking about a fizzy drink. And what we'll see here is that a glass of fizzy drink contains substances in the three states of matter. Why? Well, most of the drink is in the liquid state, okay, because that's a drink would be a liquid. However, the bubbles are in the gas state. Those ice cubes are in the solid state. We talked about ice being the solid state of water. The particles in the bubbles are gas, and so therefore they are further apart than the particles in the rest of the drink, which are mainly liquid. The particles in the ice cubes are closer together, and that's because we're in the solid state there. Place the correct word in each gap to complete the paragraph. Okay, sweat comes out of the pores in our skin. The sweat on your skin contains water. And we saw that sweat is a liquid. And what happens to that liquid is some of it evaporates to form water in the gas state. Now this process involves an energy transfer. It cools us down. Why? Well, we are giving energy to the water. So the energy is transferred from the skin to the water particles and that causes our temperature to go down. If we lose energy, we cool down. Last one, we're looking at a table here. This can be quite confusing because we're looking at negative numbers here. So be careful when you're looking at this one. Now, we're being asked a few questions about uh, the different um, substances X, Y, and Z. The first one is the substance with the highest melting point. Now remember, the higher the number, if we're looking at negative numbers, the highest numbers are going to be the ones that are closest to zero. Okay, this is as opposed to positive, where the further from zero, the, the bigger you're getting. So, if we look at the melting points, minus 249 is the lowest melting point, and that's because it's furthest away from zero, which is minus 249 from zero. Minus 218, minus 210. So, our substance Z has the highest melting point because its melting point is closest to zero. Similarly, the same logic, substance X has the lowest boiling point because its uh, boiling point is furthest from zero. It is the most negative. At minus 200 degrees, substance X is in a particular state. Now let's have a look. If we want to know the state, all we do is we think, where um, does the 200 degrees, minus 200 degrees Celsius fit in our scale? Let's see. Well, if we're looking at substance X, well, minus 249, minus 246, 200 would be on the right-hand side of this. In other words, 200, minus 200 is greater than minus 246, and it's greater than minus 249. We know that this is the boiling point, and then if we're between the melting and the boiling points, we are in the liquid state. So if we're in the right-hand side of the um, boiling point, then we are therefore in the gas state. Now we can do the same for substance Y. Look at our numbers. Well, minus 200 fits in between the melting and the boiling point. If we're in between the melting and the boiling point, then that means we are in the liquid state. Last one is a good one. It's tripped me up before. Minus 190, we want to look at the only substance, substance which is in the liquid state. Well, we take our minus 190 and we say, where does minus 190 lie on our scale? For metal, for substance X, Minus 190 is on the right-hand side. In other words, it is greater than the boiling point, and so therefore we're in the gas state. If we're in substance Y, however, minus 190 comes between the two. And so therefore, um, we are in the liquid state for substance Y. I'll have a quick check from substance Z. Substance Z, minus 190, again, comes on the right-hand side of my boiling point, and so therefore the only one in the uh, liquid state is substance Y. That's our final slide, folks. Make sure you review your answers and check them according to mine before you move on.